Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be doing a crafting project. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I am not a born crafter, but this is one of the projects that we found in the Better Homes and Gardens Halloween issue. And I have been trying to replicate some of the designs of the fireplace inspiration picks that they have. They're actually, they did four different designs for fireplaces. I've been kind of incorporating a little bit of each into my design, but specifically this witch themed mantle, I really loved and I'm trying to do something very similar in my own living room. And what we see here is a focal point of a weathered board um, witch picture. So um, it's a weatherboard canvas. The witch is made out of basically um, pages out of a book cut up and decoupaged onto the board. And uh, since I'm going for a literary themed witch living room, it's perfect. Um, but it was a little difficult finding the wood. Um, you know, this magazine doesn't give you great instructions this year, unfortunately. And what they do say is, you know, perhaps you can find a canvas, a wood canvas at your local arts and crafts store. I could not do that. Mine didn't have any such thing, but I did find this weathered barn wood at Home Depot. It was about $7.50 a board, and I'm gonna need two boards. So that was about $15. Um, we're just gonna cut it up equally into six pieces and build our own canvas out of that. Um, and then you're also going to need oops, some um, poster board. At least that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to basically um, take my witch picture, which I just took a photograph of the um, small little witch thing image that they put here in the corner. I blew it up in Adobe Illustrator um, and cut it out. <laughs> so I'm gonna trace this onto the poster board, which I got from Walmart. It was only like a dollar or two, I don't remember. Um, and then we're gonna cut it out and then we're gonna cut up this Webster's Dictionary that I got at the Goodwill store for, an, again, like a dollar. Um, we're gonna rip it up, put it on our cut up board, decoupage it, which I've never done before, so that's gonna be fun. And uh, hopefully that'll give me my literary witch. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take the wood out to the garage. These are eight foot boards, 96 inches. I want to cut them equally. So that's gonna be about 32 inches per board. Hopefully I'll get six of them. And that's gonna be about 21 inches wide. So 21 inches wide, 30, what did I say? 32 inches tall. That's about the size that's gonna work for my living room. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you pick a poster board that's gonna be appropriate to the size that you use. Um, because the first time I did this, I printed it out much bigger, didn't work. Anyway, um, just pay close attention to your measurements so you don't have to do things twice like I did. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut this now, and we'll get started. All right, I really like how it is looking so far. I've got my six pieces of wood here cut. I did go ahead and take a black Sharpie and just sort of blacken in the ends just to get rid of some of this um, bright wood, only because, um, you know, I have a, a like a, a walkway right over my fireplace area where if you were looking down on it, you could possibly see the top. So, you know, I'm not too worried about this looking great. That's why I'm just taking the Sharpie and filling it in. Just kind of show you there. Um, I, you know, you could stain it if you really wanted to look nice. I'm just doing the bare minimum so it looks acceptable if someone were to glance at it. It's not something they'd ever notice, but this will make it much you know, less noticeable on the chance that someone were looking down on it. So I've gone ahead and done that for all of my wood. And now we need to connect them together. Now, you could put a piece of backer wood on here and then, you know, screw them all together. Way too much work for me. I like things quick and easy. I'm just gonna hot glue them together. I have had a lot of um, luck. Just sort of like, I make these frames for my Halloween projects too. Just hot glue the seams. They're very sturdy. So I'm hoping I'm gonna have the same luck with my wood canvas. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Again, just make sure you got plenty of glue on there. Let's go ahead and put this on. See how it looks. All right, I'm just gonna let it sit for a few minutes just to harden. But uh, so far, I think we have a good canvas. Right, while that dries, we are going to cut out my witch silhouette. 
there we go. She is all cut out and she fits my board rather perfectly. And I think she is gonna look fantastic. Let's just go ahead and test fit her over here. I guess I can't do that because she's not stuck to my board yet. <laughs> but you get the picture. That's what she's gonna look like over there. I'm really loving the way she's looking so far. So it is time to trace it and uh, move on. All right, next up, I'm gonna take my trusty Halloween pencil and I'm just gonna start tracing around. There she is, traced out in all her glory. The only thing left to do is cut it out. Um, we can use scissors and just give it a quick cut. I'm not too worried about the edges being a little rough because we're going to Mod Podge the pages over them. I figure that's gonna hide any imperfections. But I'm very tempted also to not Mod Podge the pages if that turns out bad. Um, so maybe you might want it a little bit nicer edges. You could use a razor blade um, to give it or an exacto knife, you know, to give it a better, um, better look because uh, it might look good as a silhouette. But we're gonna take it one step at a time. I'm going to try and do the Mod Podging as it suggests, do it properly. Um, but let me get this cut out and we'll see. There she is, what do you think? I love her as a silhouette. I'm very tempted to just leave her like that, but that doesn't fit the theme that we are going for. So we are going to take some pages out of this dictionary I bought, rip them up into a thousand little pieces and start uh, decoupaging. So give me a minute to destroy this dictionary. I'm going to cheat just a little bit. We're going to be using the Mod Podge in a little while, um, but because of, I use this foam board, it's got this sort of heavy, um, thick center, and I really would like a finished edge. So I think what I'm gonna do is take some long strips of this paper um, and just run it along the edge there, and then kind of Mod Podge over it and fill it in with the rest of my scraps. But um, in order to do this without getting the Mod Podge sticking to everything. I'm just going to use my glue stick and give this paper a little bit of stickiness. Probably need some new glue sticks, um, but let's just go ahead and start doing the edges first, and then we will come back to the rest. You could actually use glue, I'm sorry, um, yeah, glue sticks to do the entire project. It might actually be easier, especially if you're not familiar with Mod Podge, as I am not. But there we go. We have a nice little start. Um, so I'm just going to go around the whole edge to get that going. She is coming along. I've got the paper all around her edges so that's going to give me this nice beautiful edge instead of that foamy mess that we had before now hopefully this will go a little bit faster that was a little time consuming but now that we're moving on to the mod podge portion um, i'm expecting to just zip through the rest of this so i'm just going to work in small sections because i'm told that this mod podge dries pretty quickly so we're just going to give a little coat to the bottom part here. I'm going over the parts I just did um, because that is going to help seal it, but it's also going to give me that adhesive for the rest of my little paper strips. Um, and all my paper strips I've just kind of um, tore because you want a nice um, random edge so that it doesn't look, you know, staged, I guess. So I'm just going to start taking all of my little paper pieces and sticking them on. It's coming together. <laughs> I have really hit my stride with this decoupage. <laughs> um, it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. You know, key is preparation. Make sure I, you have your um, pages if you're doing this project um, all ready to go. You just give it a base coat here and then we're just gonna start slapping on and 
Just do a quick brush over it to seal it down and add a little bit more of the medium on top of it. And then literally as fast as you're, you're able to just grab in place, that's how fast this thing can go. It's so easy. I'm really surprised. You know, I was uh, kind of worried about how this project was going to turn out. And I was really doubting my abilities here. But it is coming along so easy. And I really love the way it looks. So that's a good, I guess, lesson for us all. Don't give in to your fears. You know, what's the worst that could have happened? It looked bad. <laughs> I could have just cut out another piece of foam. But here we are, we are almost done. Just uh, keep overlapping to give it a nice random appearance. And then sometimes I found there are like some little corners that don't pop up because maybe they didn't get enough glue. You know, just add another little layer of glue there. Stick another piece on top, that'll flatten it out. <laughs> so that works. I tried avoiding any of the um, margins of the paper because I didn't want any of that white spot or the white bit of the margin to show through. So um, just I just tore out the page, ripped out the center section, and uh, slapped it on. So here we go. Just a couple more pieces here, and then we will be done. And it's nice, if you cut a piece that's too big, just rip it in half. And I think, you know, the more it overlaps, the more random it looks, the more fun it is. I really don't think you can mess this up, or at least not mess it up too bad. A couple more here. Just, you know, make sure the glue stays on the brush. With all this brushing, it does kind of wipe off. And if you don't get enough glue on the page, you know, you're going to get a lot of the little edges popping up. But I think there we go. I think that might be my last piece. I'm just going to go ahead and check for any other little um, exposed bits like this one right here where there's a little bit of black shown through. Just add another little piece on top. Here's another one here. And then once I have all of my spots covered, I'm just going to um, give it another coat of Mod Podge, Mod Podge, just to uh, seal it all in. And then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. All right, what do you think? She's still drying, but I couldn't wait. I had to go ahead and throw her up on the mantle just to see, because I'm actually very proud of her. I think she turned out fantastic. Uh, much better than I was anticipating. And if you take a close look at the magazine, I think she's pretty close to what we were trying to go for. Um, I did make a few little changes. Um, well, the first being that, you know, she is just you know, static here in front of the frame. So maybe next year I can do the same sort of feel, but with a different design, a different, you know, maybe not a witch, I could do a spider or a bat, who knows? So I think that's kind of fun. I like that, you know, it's reusable. I did not go with the weathered candlesticks um, as they show in the picture. I kind of like the hodgepodge design of the ones that I found at the Goodwill. I added, of course, my little apple to uh, finish it off there, but um, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed our mantle adventure. Stay tuned for more DIYs, project reviews, and so forth. And uh, that's it for today. So until next time, take care, happy haunting.